Yes. Tonight, from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. They love their crab cakes and they love their football. That's what Maryland does. And we are at M&T Bank Stadium down near the inner harbor of Baltimore. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Cleveland Browns. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. Taken in at the three. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And for the first time, here comes the Cleveland Browns offense. Quarterbacked by Baker Mayfield, fourth-year man from Oklahoma. And while we can quibble a little bit about statistics, to me, Baker Mayfield's coming off his best season yet. 26 touchdown passes, cut way down on his turnovers, and led the Browns to a playoff victory for the first time since 1994. This young man continues to mature as both a passer and a leader. First carry for Nick Chubb. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage if he breaks through there's nothing but room to run so the opening play of the drive goes backwards now they'll come up on second and 12. play fake mayfield and incomplete on the deep ball and with a dime look on defense two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass that allowed them to disrupt the play Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Throwing, Mayfield. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Hey. 
following the pickup of four. Here's second and six. Mayfield now. Man open. That's Anthony Schwartz. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 23. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people like to take a shot in this part of the field. But at the same time, as methodical as they've been, they might want to run the ball a little bit here, too. And just on the outskirts of the red zone, they have options now. Either way, though, they've come out with a purpose. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. A give running right is Chubb. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Mayfield looks to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. And this one is right through. And the Browns are out to a 3 nothing lead. Never ideal conditions in the snow for a kicker, but the first test on the opening drive, he passed it. He certainly did. You know what the unit told me was their biggest issue playing in the snow? You just worry about something getting in your eye as the ball is snapped, and then you might miss it, and there goes three points off the board. After the made field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Well, the Ravens offense set to take over and led by a man still just in his fourth season in the NFL, the 2019 MVP, Lamar Jackson. The best numbers that Lamar Jackson possesses is that his team wins the vast majority of games that he starts at quarterback. But in addition, 2,900 yards rushing in his career. They know how to build around him and play to his strengths. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll maybe get it back to the 25 here on the first play, but no more than that. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Jackson. 
catch is made by Marquise Brown. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nothing after one on EA Sports. down Murray and he'll take this ahead for about four second down coming up well on every play call you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game trying to establish the inside run run with toughness now hopefully get to the perimeter later and let's face it you could do worse than a four yard run on first down The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. From the pistol, they run it with Murray. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Jackson, he's going to keep it himself. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, They'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Jackson running again. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. First down. It's Murray. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Partner, in our years together, we've never really run into a player that's admitted a, a doubt or a lack of confidence, right? But right now, I'm just wondering about that interior line because on defense, they're starting to get manhandled at the point of attack. Do they have it in them to figure a way to reverse the tide? Because right now, they're running the ball at will. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. A handoff. It's Murray. And he's going to battle his way down right around the two-yard line. A very valuable nine-yard pickup, and now they're set up a little better here for third and goal. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. Oh, 
Stonewalled on second down. Now let's see what they can do on third and goal from the two. Now they'll run. Murray. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. And no hesitation about this decision here. Confidently, they're going to go for this. Fourth and goal from the three. They'll run it. Freeman. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Devontae Freeman. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens have taken the lead. So fourth and goal, their head coach gave that offensive line one more chance to punch it in, and this time they were successful. They certainly paid off the coach's confidence, didn't they? And how about the fact that they stayed with the ground game? Because a lot of times in that situation, partner, we see teams try and roll the quarterback out, give him a little run-pass option, and treat it like a two-point conversion play. In this case, they went with a little bit more power and got it done. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown run from Devontae Freeman. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. First down, Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw, Mayfield. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Another catch from this drive, but they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense... Do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw into the hands of Peoples-Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 more yards there and another first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup.
Going to the air again with Mayfield. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hunt. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Mayfield's throw taken in by Landry. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. Here's Mayfield. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. No problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. The Ravens going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. Huntley to throw. And a high throw there as this is knocked away down to the ground and incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw Huntley. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Huntley. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense? So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version 
of the EA Sports Halftime Report. The snow certainly making conditions difficult, and it's not likely to get better anytime soon. As we turn it right back over to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Not much has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow still continuing to fall as we are back underway. No run back here for Duvernay. Touchback out to the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Third quarter starts with a run by Freeman. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Four yards remain for second down. Freeman again. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. They run the option here on first and 10. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. They'll try the right side with Murray. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Off the play fake. Huntley. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off play action, Huntley. And he's got his receiver, that's Sammy Watkins. 
That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. Back to throw. Huntley. Throw right side is complete to Andrews. His tight end. And out of bounds right around the 20. Three yards the game there. Second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second and seven from the 20. They'll go option to the short side. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. from the gun. Huntley. Well, he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Tucker's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though. Three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 26. He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. In to make the stop, Patrick Queen, the linebacker, the Ravens' leading tackler in 2020. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Second and six. Now Mayfield. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. Mayfield on target to Landry for a Browns first down. Field to throw it. 
Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. It's Chuck Clark picking it off, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners, who have had the receivers on lockdown. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. down. Huntley slings it to Anders and it's complete. The tight end has it. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Another nice pick up through the air and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. They run from the shotgun with Murray, and he gets it down to the 32. 43 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. But they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Off the play fake, Huntley. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. I think it might be time to move to a different section of the playbook there because back-to-back -back runs, both for loss. Now they have third and long coming up. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Here's Jackson to throw. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now... As you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Now Mayfield and the Browns down by 10, a minute 52 to play. Their offense has struggled all night, and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now Mayfield. Space to maneuver at the 40. He was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time. That'll bring up second down. The nice thing is that you've still got all your timeouts in the middle of the field. That should still be an option, especially if you see the defenders pinching the sideline. You can run a little seam route right here and pick up some nice yardage. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Mayfield. Pass caught by Hooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 29 yards, first down. In this weather, any big play in the passing game, that's that's just a bonus, right? It certainly is, but oftentimes offenses think in clement weather plays to their advantage because you know where you're going on offense. Defenders have to react, and they often slip. Mayfield able to find Hunt out of the backfield. Call it a gain of five, and that'll make it a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. They field the throw. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. Mayfield. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the penalty yards marched off on the face mask. Here's first and 10. Here's Baker. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Mayfield. Well, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Mayfield. Going for it all. And this is caught. So it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. Coming from where they were, they knew this was going to be tough, but they got the touchdown. Now they need the miracle, the onside kick and a little extra. Yeah, and you have to get the onside kick and not have the ball bounce around a lot and eat up time. You want to be able to grab it, possess it, and get your offense out there for what you just termed a miracle, miracle. last chance. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And he puts it through there within three. It's 13 to 10. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's capped off by the Browns touchdown.
So now with little time remaining, they'll have this and maybe one more play. And who's got it? I think the Ravens do, yes. And they're going to win this football game. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here and we will get a timeout with two ticks left Jackson and that should seal it so the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory and this one won't be remembered for many offensive fireworks but they did enough to get the job done and that's why it's a team game because sometimes you have to lean on one part of your team and they leaned on their defense in fact they probably went over there and asked for some help like guys we just don't have it in this one can you hook us up and they did in a big way they said no problem put it on our shoulders we'll carry you home and they did exactly that So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.